So this video is going to talk about how you solve absolute value equations. In an earlier video, we talked about how you can actually evaluate expressions with absolute values in them when there's just numbers, you make your final answer positive and all that. But here, we don't have that option because we have variables on the inside of our absolute value. We want to solve an equation where there's an absolute value with a variable in it. So, there are two real rules that you're going to have to keep in mind when doing these problems here. And I'm going to give you the first one before I start doing the problem. So the first and probably most important rule, an absolute value cannot equal a negative. So an absolute value can't equal a negative. That's a really important rule and it's something that people tend to forget when they're doing problems. Um, remember, when you take the absolute value of a number, it spits out a positive answer. So we definitely don't want to see absolute value equal to a negative number. The second rule I'll get to in a little bit, but I want to actually move ahead and try out this problem first. So we're taking the absolute value of x, and it's whatever we get, like when we do that, we're, well, the answer is 10. So we're taking the absolute value of x, and we're getting 10. We want to know what number could have been inside that absolute value right here. So the first answer that um, most of you guys jump, probably say right away, well, 10 works, x equals 10. Absolute value of 10 is just 10. There's actually a second answer to this problem, though, that also works. And that is going to be negative 10. Because if you take the absolute value of negative 10, you end up with a positive 10. So both of these, there are two solutions to this problem, x equals 10 and x equals negative 10. On the second problem right here, I want to use the same sort of logic to see if we can arrive at our answer here. First of all, when kids look at this problem, they might be like, oh, well, okay, x plus 2 equals 6, the answer is 4, so it must be 4 and negative 4. That's a pretty common thing that people will do. So let me run with that for a second. This is usually what kids tell me first when I, when I try to solve this problem. If you plug in a 4, we're totally good. 4 plus 2 is 6, the absolute value of 6 is 6. That works. That's going to be one of our answers. If you plug in a negative 4, though, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. That didn't work out. So you can't just be like, oh, I know the answer, and I'm gonna just going to make it, make it negative to get the other answer. It didn't work right here. Um, another thing kids will do is they'll get that first answer, but they won't even bother giving a second. You will almost always have two answers when doing these absolute value problems. And I'll probably write that in a chart in a later video for you guys. But for right now, let me show you how I would go about doing this. I'm still taking the absolute value of something. Don't know what it is. It's under my hand. Pretend you can't, don't know what's underneath my finger there. I know that when I take the absolute value of it, though, my answer is 6. Ask yourself, what number could be hidden underneath my finger there if the absolute value of it is equal to 6? And the answer is, well, that could be a 6 under my finger because the absolute value of 6 is 6. It could also be a negative 6 underneath my finger there. So this thing, x plus 2, is either a 6 or a negative 6. That's the only way you can take the absolute value and get 6 for your answer. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to break it into two cases. The first one, thing on the inside, the thing that was under my finger, could have been a 6, like I said. The other possibility is that the thing underneath my finger there was actually a negative 6. So what I did is I broke my problem up into two separate problems. I kept the part on the inside the same. x plus 2, x plus 2 did not mess with that. The only thing that changed is I did regular answer. And I did a negative answer as well. A lot of you guys, when you were back in um, Algebra 1, probably heard this as that phrase, two bars, two equations. If that sounds familiar to you, that is what's going on in these videos with these problems. If it doesn't, um, basically, if you see those two bars for the absolute value, you're going to break your problem off into two different equations here and solve them. Keep the inside the same, and then you're just going to make the answer negative. That's probably even worth writing down in your notes. Keep inside the same. So do not mess with that left side. You only change the answer. And then you just solve your two problems. Well, this one's going to be x equals 4. Subtract 2 from both sides. And this answer is x equals negative 8. And if you plug it negative 8 back in, you will find that it does work. So those are our two solutions to this problem. I have two more problems on this video. And the next one, I want you to try to pause the video and see if based on what we just did, you can figure out what's going on and how to get the answer on this one. So again, the setup is the same. The thing under my fingers right there could either be a 15, 
or it could be a negative 15. That's the only way you take the absolute value and you get 15. So I'm gonna do my two bars, two equations, breaking it into two pieces. Thing on inside equals 15, or thing on inside equals negative 15. And then it's really just a matter of solving both of those equations for x. When you do the two bars, two equations, there's no more absolute value signs. You're just doing regular plain old algebra. So you get negative 4x equals 8, and if you solve this, you'll get x equals negative 2. On this guy here, it doesn't look like we're going to get a whole number answer, but that's totally fine. Um, that would be a 5.5, I believe. So those are my two solutions. Now you may be asking yourself, wait a minute, I thought absolute values couldn't be negative. I got a negative answer right there. Answers are fine to be negative, it's just the absolute value itself needs to be equal to a positive. If you plug a negative 2 in there, and I'll actually show that real fast, you would have absolute value negative 4 times negative 2 plus 7, and then equals 15. We want to see if that works. That's going to be 8 plus 7 It's 15. It worked out. You can check the other one as well. One more problem on this video here. We have the absolute value of this guy right here equals negative 14. Now, you might be tempted on this problem to just jump straight into two bars, two equations, and solve it, and you will get answers. I'll actually just power through this real fast. Don't actually write this down, um, because I'll show you why in a second. This is what kids might be tempted to do. You basically just write out the problem, and you solve them. Uh, this one will be negative 9, and this one would be 5. So you will get answers if you do two bars, two equations here. But let's take this answer right here and plug it in. We got 5 right here. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 4 is 14. The absolute value of 14, though, is not negative 14. We got an answer, but if you plug it in, it doesn't work. The thing that went wrong here, the reason this happened, is because we had absolute value equal to a negative number. Absolute values cannot equal negative numbers. So if you get a situation like this, do not do two bars, two equations. You'll get answers, but they won't be right. As soon as you see absolute value equals negative, you stop. No solution can't be done. Absolute values do not equal negatives. So to close this video, I want to make a quick table for you guys. How many solutions will I have to an absolute value problem? If you have absolute value of x equal to a positive, there are three situations basically. Absolute value of x equal equal positive, absolute value of x could equal 0, and the absolute value of x can equal a negative. If it's equal to a positive, that's like what happens over here. This is just one problem right here. You do your two bars, two equations, you get two different answers. So if it's equal to a positive, there will be two solutions. We'll get two different answers. That's going to be most of our problems that we deal with. I'm going to skip to down to the negative for a second. If we have absolute value of x equal to a negative number, like in this problem right here, there are no solutions. Nothing works because it doesn't make sense. No solutions here. And if we have absolute value equal to zero, there's going to be just one solution. Because if you think about it, if you do your two bars, two equations on something like this, you get x equals zero. And then on the other side here, you would get also negative zero is still just zero. So you get the same answer twice. So based on what it's equal to, you know how many answers you will have.